Hello everyone across the globe, far and wide. My name is Shaylin Potter, and we are streaming to you live here from Antarctica. And we are traveling with Lindblad Expeditions aboard the beautiful Nas National Geographic Resolution that you might see behind me. And we are specifically here in the Western Antarctic Peninsula, the WAP, and we are close to the La Mer Channel. And it's pretty chilly out. We've already been outside for a few hours, but hey, we are in Antarctica and we've been exploring by our zodiacs, our small boats. We've been checking out all of the beautiful icebergs around. We've been on shore checking out the penguin colonies, but I really wanna focus on a different aspect of the expedition, which is the undersea world, because we are traveling across vast amounts of water on this expedition. But remember, it's not just water, it's a marine ecosystem full of vibrant, colorful, beautiful life. So I'm here with the undersea specialist and polar diving team, Amy Malkowski and Kayvon Malik, and they're going to tell us a little bit about their jobs and the undersea world here in Antarctica. So I know there might be many scuba divers watching from home, but have you ever thought about diving in Antarctica? Well, we have and we do, and we're going to learn a little bit about it. So I know this is the coldest ocean globally here in the Southern Ocean, but how cold is it? It can get to about 29 degrees, which is the freezing point of salt water. So anything lower than that would be ice. So do you feel cold? What does it feel like? <laughs> it definitely feels cold. I, I say that uh, no matter the dive day, you're comfortable because you're, you know it's going to be the coldest thing you've ever done at that moment. Doesn't matter how many times, it's just going to be cold. Yeah, we wear a lot of gear, but even still, usually by 10 minutes, you're cold. And then after that, it's just sort of a waiting game until your fingers start to go numb and that fine line until they're not numb so that you can get out. Ouch. Uh, okay, so I know you're... <laughs> sound, sounds pretty rough. Uh, so I know your role as undersea specialist, uh, but what does that mean? What does a day in the life look like doing that? What's your role? What's the purpose? What are you doing? So undersea specialist to me uh, is, is like ocean ambassador. You're bringing the ocean, the story of the ocean, of where we go, all these places we go, we're on the ships. Uh, we, there's wonderful marine life and that marine life generally we only see from the surface. So the undersea team's job is to bring that up from below and to show that and to teach about the different ecosystems, to show the life out here, to show maybe some of the changes that are happening in these places that we travel and just to unveil what's hidden by water. So you guys are going down, you're scuba diving in these waters, you're taking cameras to film and bring up to show the guests what might otherwise be left a mystery. Is that right? Exactly, yeah. So we'll film underwater and uh, every time that we are filming, we're filming right then and there on that dive. We'll edit it together and then show the guests that day. So if they were out on a Zodiac cruise or they were on a hike, they get to see what is actually below the water right where they were. And oftentimes it's completely different and beautiful and such a surprise to both us and the guests. Yeah, that's amazing to hear. So I know that the, the undersea team or the, under, the expedition diving program is unique to Lindblad Expeditions National Geographic, but what's the importance of that? Why is that vital to the guest experience on board and for people to learn about this ecosystem? We truly live on a blue planet and we are so interdependent with the ocean and it is dependent upon us. And so to separate that from this trip would be a, a travesty because it's so beautiful and it's so important to us 
every other breath that we are taking is from the ocean, from those phytoplankton that are down there. And especially in a place where it's almost 23 hours of sunlight, you have intense algal blooms. And so, so much pro productivity is here. So when you're diving in these extreme conditions below the freezing point of fresh water, I imagine you need quite extensive gear. So what's something that's different about this gear that you might need for polar diving versus just normal or diving people might be used to doing in tropical water? Yeah. So uh, for example, uh, I have a tank with two, uh, two valves on it. So I have my, uh, if you're familiar with diving, the regulator is kind of broken up into two uh, separate first stages and then that comes down to our regulator here we have from today when we're out the this regulator is a cold water regulator it actually has a shut off uh, so I can turn it off if it starts free flowing if there's ice crystals that start to form here in the first stage we can turn one of our valves off we have more backups than most divers generally have. so have you had that happen have you had a free flow while diving in these polar waters yeah, I've had the second stage freeze up. Uh, luckily, when these free flow, they just give you too much air and they don't stop giving you air. Uh, that's how they freeze up. I was able to luckily uh, turn it off, shake it out, and then turn it back on. And it was okay, but if it would keep going, then we'd have to end the dive. So I know people at home are, most people have never been to Antarctica. They've probably never thought about what lives in these cold, dark waters. And can you tell people what you see, what they can expect to see in the Southern Ocean? Cold water is more nutrient rich and holds more oxygen and so it is the most biodiverse water that we have. Uh, there are incredible sponges and tunicates and sea stars and ice fish which are special fish that have basically an antifreeze property within their blood and that allows for them to live in these freezing waters. There are so many amazing animals and every time I go diving here I see something I've never seen before. Yeah, when we think about diving, a lot of times we go diving in, you know, maybe the South Pacific and we're hoping to see big schools of fish, maybe uh, big reefs or fish all around here. This is, I like to call it a more ancient uh, ocean. It's more invertebrate based. If we see a fish on our, our dive, we are so ecstatic. <laughs> but most of the life is invertebrates, like Amy mentioned, the sea stars everywhere, the echinoderms. Uh, we have different uh, pelagic species like salps free flowing through the water. So really interesting and different than anywhere else in the world any other ocean. So you touched a little bit on how it's productive and diverse. Can you elaborate a little bit more about why it's productive or how that's fitting into the ecosystem here? Yeah, so what's interesting is that all of the animals that we're seeing while we're down here, the big, beautiful, flashy things like the whales and the penguins and the seals are all animals that are living within the ocean, dependent upon it for eating. They're all mostly feeding on krill and all of that krill is feeding on the algal blooms that I was mentioning. So because we're in a place with a lot of productivity, a lot of oxygen, nutrients that are in the runoff from the glaciers, as well as that are basically nutrients that are re-released from the whales, you have tons of different ways that you're able to have things fertilizing for the algal bloom, which is then fertilizing the krill and then feeding all the other animals. And so it's just an incredible biodiversity based on all of that. Yeah, so I know from my experience diving here and seeing your footage that everything on the surface is pretty monochromatic, but then when you drop below the surface, it's just completely vibrant, reds, yellows, oranges, purples, everything under the sun. Do you have anything like a favorite memory or a scary memory from diving here, or a favorite thing to see? I, I love the crinoids, the feather stars. They're relatives of sea stars, but uh, they just look like aliens. They have like these ten like tentacles coming up out, uh, like ten different more, and they have uh, like a base that they go and they can swim through the water. They'll literally be swimming, moving through the water, and they'll sit on high areas and catch different uh, organic material floating through the water. I, we, I saw one on a previous dive carry off a, uh, a sea urchin. It was like an alien abduction. I just imagined that urchin like, oh. Uh, so that was super fun and I just followed it with the current. And so it's always something different like Amy was saying, always something unique that's fun to film. So just to show people what you're filming with, because it takes quite a lot of gear. We talked about the dive gear. Are you able to grab your camera uh, just so they can see uh, what you're shooting with to capture all of this amazing footage to bring back and to show the guests? Yeah, so this is uh, a housing that just has a standard uh, mirrorless camera in here, a Sony mirrorless camera. Uh, these are three lights coming off uh, for uh, 
uh, for we need to bring our own light because we lose a lot of light underwater we lose a lot of color underwater so we need to bring that color back uh, so it looks realistic. Uh, we have a GoPro here for filming. We can switch that either way to catch the stuff that maybe I'm too slow to hit the button on. And then a tripod here because we never know what we're gonna see when we're diving down here. And then we have a, a camera for macro for really zoomed in on the small life so that we can see. So we have a lot of gear because we just don't know what we're gonna find. So we kinda gotta do it all. On the topic of gear, I see you're wearing something pretty fancy. Yeah. Can, you, can you explain that? Look, it looks expensive is what it looks. <laughs> it is, in fact. Um, so this is my dry suit. It's made of crushed neoprene, um, so it makes it more durable and a little bit warmer. I'm also laying, uh, wearing s several layers underneath. So I have on a base layer um, and then a secondary thermal layer, and then I have on a puffy coat, and then I have on essentially a onesie which is made specifically for diving um, as well as two pairs of gloves two pairs of socks and toe warmers and hand warmers and then my dry suit <laughs> that's all and the rock boots a lot of gear a lot of gear so i know talking on the client or the topic of climate change we're hearing a lot about it is there something you see here what are you worried about what are your concerns for climate change in this ecosystem I think one of the most interesting things to me this season compared to all the others is right now the water is beautiful blue clear. And at first glance, that's great for me as a videographer because that's a great background, but it should be soupy pea green, uh, pea soup green. And so there's been a lot of reports about a lot of uh, difficulties with the krill populations this season. We're not seeing the, the krill come in like we normally do. It's been affecting uh, different populations of penguins, fur seals. So uh, that's been something really interesting to me that I've been really focused on that at first I was like, oh, awesome. Blue, beautiful blue tropical water but then as we start to dig into it we see oh is this something that's changing is this something that we need to monitor so. anything to add <laughs> yeah there's a whale <laughs> uh, yeah one of the other things that we've seen because there is less krill and less sea ice is a lot of selps so selps are a planktonic tunicate and they thrive in years of poor sea ice and we saw half a dozen on our dive and they are something that also consumes krill larvae. So not only are the krill who are dependent on sea ice down in population for that, but they're also being consumed by the more productive and more abundant salps. So it's sort of this yeah. cycle that's... It's a real issue, yeah. yeah. And the salp don't have a lot of nutritional input into the environment as well. So when they're uptaking that krill, instead of maybe you know, different fish or other animals, it's not really being put back into in the way that would with other species. Do you have anything else you want to add, people to know about your job, polar expedition diving, filming anything? I think it's so rare and so special to get to come to amazing places like this and to see a little glimpse of sort of the whole picture, both below and above, is something that I feel really blessed to be able to do. And it's been amazing and continues to be an, a never-ending adventure every time. <laughs> I think uh, not having the undersea program aboard with, or the expedition diving program aboard, it would be like driving through a national park at night. You know, you have your headlights on, you can see some stuff on the side of the road, but everything else is hidden from view. And so what we were able to go down there and to bring that back, and I think I've definitely seen a lot of our guests really just surprised at what's down there, how colorful it is, how beautiful it is. And so it's, it's a whole picture and it's an ocean planet, like Amy said, so we need to showcase the subtitle part of it as well. Great, so yeah, we're gonna wrap it up here. It's getting pretty chilly, and we're gonna actually make our way through the La Mer Channel, and so I really appreciate you guys joining me, even cold and wet from diving, and like they were saying, you know, climate change is becoming more and more of a problem, and it's an ocean planet. Antarctica is a marine ecosystem, and it's really important for us to be able to talk about this and showcase it and get people interested and excited because things are changing. And for me, studying this environment, I know I'm always concerned about losing species before we even know they exist. And so it's something we need to keep talking about and learning ways we can mitigate our effects. So yeah, thanks for showing us a little glimpse into the underwater world of the Southern Ocean. And that's all from us. Thanks for tuning in, everyone.